This episode is brought to you by Elysia Sky Coaching, offering intuitive mindfulness and meditation training to individuals and corporations all over the world. Visit ElysiaSkyWellness.com to begin your healing journey. Sound Mind and Body is supported by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. So I think all of us have yo-yo dieted here and there. I certainly have. And I, and once I had this learning, I now understood why it was easy for me to regain weight. That fat is always trying to come back. Um, it makes me understand why I have to work harder on diets than other people do. And what that really means is it's, it's not a reason to be depressed. Some people see this as very depressing. I thought it was very empowering to finally know why this was happening to me. And now I know what to do. You know, the key is to understand your fat. Work with your fat, not against it. And don't get frustrated. If other people are losing weight quickly and you're not, it's just something individually about you that you have to learn to work with. Be intelligent about your fat. And I'm hoping The Secret Life of Fat helps people do that. Hello and welcome to Sound Mind and Body a podcast where we talk about the many different ways to stay healthy, balanced, and well of mind, body, and spirit in today's crazy world with a dash of woo-woo. I'm your host, Sheila Melody, and today we're talking about fat. But this is not about the latest diet or exercise. Today, we are going to learn how to work with your fat, not against it. You may not love your fat, but your body certainly does. In fact, your body is actually endowed with many self-defense measures to hold on to fat. My guest today is Dr. Sylvia Tara, author of The Secret Life of Fat. Dr. Tara brings together cutting-edge research with historical perspectives to reveal fat's true identity, an endocrine organ that, in the right amount, is critical to our health. In her book, Dr. Tara expertly illustrates the complex role genetics, hormones, diet, exercise, and history play in our weight and sets you on the path to beat the bulge once and for all. Information we all need to know. So welcome, Dr. Tara. Great. Thank you. It's so great to be here. We talked last year, it was about about almost a year and a half ago on the Informed Fitness Podcast, and that's where I listened to your book. Well, I got the audio book and the hardcover copy, and I've used it and referred it to people ever since and just had my own aha moments while listening to it. So let's start from the beginning. Why did you decide to write this book? Yeah, so I, I have a problem that I gain weight very, very easily. I've seen people all around me be able to eat what they want and not gain weight, and that isn't me. And I'm a biochemist by training, so if anyone can understand fat, I certainly can. (laughs) And so I went on a five-year endeavor, and I I think I read a thousand papers out of the scientific literature about fat and obesity research. I talked to 50 leading scientists around the world about their research, and what I was learning was just so surprising, so astounding. It answered my every question about fat. And I thought, I really have to share this with everybody. And that was the foundation for the book that I wrote. And there is so much interesting information in your book that I never heard before reading it. Yeah. So what was the most surprising thing that you found out about fat? The most surprising thing is that fat is not just fat. We tend to think of it as just this reserve of calories and we have to get rid of it at all costs because it's extra and excessive and it's just a vestigial you know, relic of the past. And that's absolutely not true. It turns out that fat is an active endocrine organ which means it's emitting hormones into our body that our body depends on. We can't live without our fat. It's important as our adrenal gland, our thyroid gland, our pituitary gland, any of those glands. Fat is a gland and it's interacting. You know, For example, um, fat has direct control on, on brain size, believe it or not. Um, it has effect on our reproductive system, um, effect on our bone strength, even on wound healing. So people with, that have deficient fat, they either don't have enough fat or their fat is defective in some way. They have problems with reaching puberty and maturity. They have problems with their bones. Their their brains are smaller. They don't heal as quickly as as the rest of us do. So your fat is doing so much more than just storing calories. The other really shocking part of that is that fat, uh, through a hormone that it releases called leptin, 
It has direct control on our appetite and our behavior towards food. It's very interesting. Fat controls itself in a way because it controls our mind and how we think about food. And so when we, we lose fat, we lose leptin. And the reaction our brain has is to, to think about food all the time and get obsessive with it. And our appetites get bigger. And it also reduces our metabolism when we lose fat and lose leptin because fat has direct control on our metabolism as well. So people who have lost weight have to actually eat fewer calories than people who are naturally at that weight to begin with because of the reduction in metabolism after you lose some fat. And this was a big aha moment for me to think that, um, you know, I used to think that once I got to my target weight, I could eat like other people at that weight. And this is why I was regaining a lot. So again, it just answered so many of my questions to do this research. So like if you lose 20 pounds or 30 pounds, you have to eat 20% less calories than someone who is normally at that same weight, right? That's exactly right. So if you, you know, to put numbers on it, say that you're 170 pounds and you've lost 20 pounds to get to 150 pounds. Someone who is naturally at 150 pounds can eat more than you can at 150 pounds after you've lost it. You'll have to eat 22% fewer calories, which gets to about 450 calories less every day or run an extra mile right, every day. And that's because fat has control on our metabolism. Our metabolism is generally good when we have that normal level of fat that we have. But when we lose some fat, we start to lose leptin. And as we lose leptin, our metabolism goes down. That effect can last for years. Um, it's been studied for up to six years, and it might last forever in some people. Goodness. So just make sure, you know, when you get on a diet, know you're going to be on that diet for a very long time. This is not a one-time effort. It, it takes as much effort to maintain weight loss as it does to achieve weight loss to begin with. Well, that's why the weight loss industry is so huge. Everybody just keeps going in a loop and it's the yo-yo dieting. And then doesn't it like build back up and it, it's even harder the next time or you gain more? Oh, yo-yo dieting has real impact. <laughs> yes. What gets... happens when that happens? Like, let's say you just keep going through that you're dieting up almost, you know, like, is that because of the way the fat's trying to protect you and and trying to maintain itself? Yeah, fat has protective measures. And it has, there's actually some memory on set points too for our body of how much we have weight and what's the bottom threshold. And every time we want to go lower than that threshold, it requires a lot of effort. You can do it. Uh, I know there's some people who say, well, set point is a set point and you can never go below it. That's not true. You can. So I think all of us have yo-yo dieted here and there. I certainly have. And, I, and once I had this learning, I now understood why it was easy for me to regain weight. That fat is always trying to come back. Um, it makes me understand why I have to work harder on diets than other people do. Um, it's because, you know, again, my, my having a lower metabolism overall from yo-yo dieting, I think about food more. So it's a bit of more struggle for me. And what that really means is it's, it's not a reason to be depressed. Some people see this as very depressing. I thought it was very empowering to finally know why this was happening to me. And now I know what to do. And yes, I work harder on diets. Um, it's a little bit more of a struggle for me, but I've, I've now shifted to solutions that can help with those problems. So there's all kinds of exercises you can do, mental exercises to stay on your diet. There's lifestyle tactics you can do as far as distraction, um, you know, types of food you can eat. And then I've also, you know, come upon intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating, which allows me to eat kind of what I want as for a portion of the day. And uh, that's actually my next level of uh, interest, I think, in the dieting field is understanding when we can eat, when we can. So why is it harder for some people to start with? Like you said that it was harder for you to start. Why is it harder for some people than it is for others? Um, gender plays a role in this. Uh, women <laughs> get more fat than men. Even from the time girl babies are born, they have more fat than boy babies. Yeah. Um, probably in utero, they have more fat. It's just the way we're designed to be. Women partition more nutrients into their fat compared to men. So automatically, we're, we're putting a little bit more of our calories into fat. Um, women also have, uh, we store fat at two to three times the rate that men do. And so there's all these differences. There's also a difference in age. Mm -hmm. As we uh, get older, we lose our fat burning hormones. We have less testosterone, estrogen, and growth hormone. Those decline with age. And so we have a tendency to gain more visceral fat, more fat overall. Uh, there's bacteria, there's viruses that are associated with, with fat gain. And uh, there's also genetics to this. There are genes that are associated with a higher inclination to, to pack fat on. There's the FTO gene that has a certain variation correlated with higher appetite and higher fat creation. IRS1 is another gene. So we all come in with this different individual biological profile and we'll all gain and lose just slightly differently. Now, the key is to understand your fat, work with your fat, not against it. 
And don't get frustrated. If other people are losing weight quickly and you're not, it's just something individually about you that you have to learn to work with. Be intelligent about your fat. And I'm hoping The Secret Life of Fat helps people do that. It definitely made me think about my fat completely differently. And it was also so reassuring to have proof that men are so much different than women. And, you know, because it, there's, you know, re- in relationships, if people have diet together and then your, your husband or your boyfriend is like losing 20 pounds and you're like, I've only lost two pounds, you know, like what is going on here? So it's not because you're not doing the work. It's just because men and women are totally different in how their bodies are. Yeah. And the good side of that is that women tend to be healthier when it comes to cardiovascular disease and and metabolic disease. So although we're really efficient fat storers, the upside is that we're cleansing our blood. Those fats and that cholesterol, it's not hanging around our blood like it is in men. We're putting it into our fat, which is where it belongs, essentially. And so although we're heavier, um, as we age, we tend to be a little healthier for longer compared to men. So there's an upside to all of this. And perhaps (laughs) think about that too. We have a little bit of an upside there as we get older. So (laughs) that's one thing that I, in your book, that you talked about how your, your own journey was, you know, having to, you were running and you were doing you know, you're exercising in the evening and stuff. Talk a little bit about that, how you sent a message to your fat, look, I don't need this or, you know, explain a little bit about that because that was kind of an aha moment for me. Why do you do cardio? It's not to burn calories. It's to send this message. Yeah. So, you know, when I finally learned everything about fat, I knew what to do. It became a war of the wills and I'm very strong willed. So I knew it couldn't win now, but (laughs) I I just kept a log of everything I did and how my weight, my fat responded to it. Um, And then I kept a log of my exercise too. And, you know, what I noticed is that there were certain foods that I could eat, even some of the foods that are supposed to be on a blacklist for dieters, they actually did not cause a problem for me. Like like chocolate in very small amounts actually didn't make me gain any weight. I could still lose weight on small amounts. A cookie, on the other hand, anything with white flour, my body would react in such a way that I would gain a pound for that. So I I started seeing a profile of my biology. And then, you know, I I added exercise, you know, towards the end too. And I I noticed if I didn't eat at night, if I ratcheted back the hours to about four o'clock, it would accelerate weight loss. Um, Exercise could work, but not always. Uh, if I were exercise in the morning, I would get hungry. And women have a higher response, uh, hunger response to exercise compared to men. We get more ghrelin, which is a stomach hormone that is associated with hunger. And women have a 25% higher ghrelin response to hunger. I mean, so, sorry, to exercise. So we get more hungry. Um, so I did a little trick where I started exercising at night. I get the exercise in and uh, go to sleep. <laughs> and my body didn't have time to be hungry. Um, so just body hack. You know, keep a, keep a journal of what you're doing. Keep a track of your own fat. We're all different. In fact, there's interesting research coming out of uh, Weizmann Institute in Israel now showing that not everyone responds to all foods the same. Some people can have alcohol or a muffin or Mm -hmm. a cookie, and they don't really gain. They don't have a blood sugar spike. Other people are very sensitive. So your own insulin responses to foods will vary too. And I I think that's the way I was. I just, I took it seriously. I understood fat. Um, I could work with it. I knew what it was doing. I kept a really clear log and started noticing when I was losing weight, when not, and it kind of adopted my own diet to it. Wow. That, yeah. That's really good advice. Do you, you just have to like, it's like you said, body hack. You have to hack your own body. It's different that yeah. you can't just go on one diet and it's going to work for everybody. It's, it yeah. doesn't work that There are some that things uh, that, that work across all body types. So this is how you can start. I mean, certainly leave out sugary, fatty foods. No, no doubt that's going to mm-hmm. provoke insulin response. That's going to pack on weight. Cut out those right away. Salads are great. So I, do, I talk about the microbiome and the secret life of fat. Um, our bacteria helps us extract more calories out of food than we can do on our own. If you're eating fibrous, tough foods, even your bacteria can't digest that all. A lot of it will pass as waste. So go, go for it. Go for a salad, a large salad in the middle of the day. Um, leave out sugary foods. Get adequate sleep. Mm-hmm. Right, Sleep also helps keep our leptin levels high, so we're more satiated overall. It helps keep ghrelin levels lower, which is the hunger hormone, so we're not as hungry the next day. It helps keep the metabolism high as well. And then stop eating. Try to extend that overnight fasting period. Right, If you can stop eating around 5 or 6 o'clock, don't eat again until 9 or 10 the next day. And the reason for that is that the growth hormone, which is a great fat-busting hormone, the level peaks at night. So the longer you can stay oh. empty, hungry, it's going to increase the activity of growth hormone in your body. So try to extend that that fast. And it's not that hard to do. Just stop it, you know, early dinner, 
late breakfast, and you'll see how dramatically you'll start burning fat by far more than, than if you eat late into the night. That is a great tip. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about can you be fit and fat? Do you feel like you have a lot to offer and so many ideas, but you don't quite know where to start? Well, that is exactly how I felt until I started working with Alicia Sky. Alicia is an internationally certified life and wellness coach who helps people find their woo-woo through meditation training, mindfulness coaching, and intuitive energy healing. I started working with Alicia with an energy healing session, and it helped me to release what wasn't working for me so I could start to move in a positive and focused direction toward my dreams. And then I continued working with Alicia privately with her mindfulness, meditation, and intuitive training techniques. Her coaching has helped me to clear away the worry, doubt, judgment, and fear and get focused on what I really want to achieve. For corporations, Alicia can implement and guide wellness programs that help staff members embrace changes, reduce stress, and inspire a positive trickle-down effect throughout the business on a personal and professional level. With a shift in perception and a strong sense of purpose, you can accomplish things you never dreamed possible. To learn more about Alicia, listen to my episode where I interviewed her, episode 28, or go to aliciaskywellness.com. To start finding your woo-woo or to help your corporation, go to aliciaskywellness.com or find the link in our show notes. Hey, it's Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of Sound, Mind, and Body. Just the fact that you're listening to the Sound, Mind, and Body podcast tells us that you enjoy consuming your content through your ears. Now, if you're a podcast listener, you're a perfect fit to enjoy audiobooks. So for you, our listeners and official members of Sheila's Woo Woo community, Audible is offering you a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial to check out their awesome service. Give it a shot. You've got nothing to lose. It's absolutely free for 30 days, and you get a free audiobook to keep even if you don't continue with the subscription. Support Sound, Mind, and Body by visiting audibletrial.com slash inbound. That's audibletrial.com slash inbound. We'll include a link in the show notes or just click the Audible banner at soundmindbodypodcast.com. On the next episode of Sound, Mind, and Body, we discuss the art and science of natural mental health with Heather Jurgensen. It's so important to know that our minds are active and what are our minds doing. There is something called ruminative thoughts, Uh and that's a pretty old-fashioned word for just worrying. Rumination. Ruminating. Ruminating. It's really about getting into your thoughts and okay. catching them, saying, oops, uh, look what I'm doing. I just started thinking I'm a loser. It'll never work. <laughs> That's my rumination. you got to catch it when you get into a negative loop in your mind and you have to get yourself off that train. It's called self-talk. So you right. say, I'm going to jump off that train of that old rumination that doesn't serve me and I'm going to replace it. I don't know. Lots of other people have done this. Maybe I can do it. Right. And there's all kinds of little easy little tricks to get yourself back in a more positive mental train. That's next week on Sound, Mind, and Body. Okay, we are back and we're talking to Dr. Sylvia Terra, the author of the book, The Secret Life of Fat. And before we took the break, you gave us some great tips on stopping eating at about five or six at night and then trying to do a late breakfast, and that will help the growth hormone to help you burn more fat. It's intermittent fasting, basically, right? Yes, that's right. So let me ask you this question. Can you be fit and still fat? So there's actually different types of fat in your body. Um, And depending on what kind of fat you have, you can be overweight and still healthy. So we have uh, subcutaneous fat, and that's the fat right underneath your skin. That's the fat in your arms, that's in your buttocks, in your thighs, even in your abdomen, right underneath the skin there. Then there's also visceral fat, and that's fat that's underneath the stomach wall, nestled against the internal organs. When visceral fat, when we get too much, it becomes crowded and inflamed. 
And when that happens, it starts to interfere with insulin signaling. That's when we are more prone to type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So all those diseases you hear about associated with obesity, a lot of it has to do with high levels of visceral fat. A quick test you can do to see if you have high levels of visceral fat, it's to lie on the floor. If you still have a big paunch on your stomach out when you're lying flat on your back, that is probably visceral fat. It's under the stomach wall and staying right there. If that fat dissipates off to the sides and you get a flattened stomach when you lie down, that is subcutaneous fat, and that's a healthier deposit of fat. Um, it's always best not to be overweight, but if you are overweight, put your fat in the safer deposits, which is that subcutaneous fat. Believe it or not, fat has another tool to help us be healthy. So, so fat releases a hormone called adiponectin. Adiponectin actually helps guide the fats in our blood into subcutaneous fat where it belongs. Exercise promotes the release of adiponectin from fat. Sumo wrestlers exercise seven hours a day. And so although they're eating in abundance, all those extra nutrients and fats they have in their blood are going to subcutaneous fat. Mm -hmm. That big belly they have, it's actually not underneath the stomach wall. So they're metabolically healthy. When they retire and they stop exercising and eat processed food, they become metabolically unhealthy very quickly. So, you know, fat, uh, in a way, it, it's preserving itself, but it's also preserving healthy levels of fat. So your fat is trying to help you. <laughs> it is. It's trying to help you stay healthy. And we have to, you know, help it also, you know, work it at being healthy. And so just like we work on these campaigns to keep our colon healthy, our lungs healthy, we actually have to keep our fat healthy. I like that concept and, and the concept of working with it and befriending your fat and not, <laughs> you know, not working against it. It's only trying to help you, right? Well, remember, fat is directly linked to our reproductive health, right? People who have anorexia um, or a defect in their fat, genetic defect in their fat, they actually have real trouble reproducing. Um, you know, for, for men and for women, they have smaller brain size. They don't heal as quickly. Their immune system's impacted. Our fat is keeping all of those bodily functions working normally. And that's again, because of the hormones that fat is releasing into the blood. So you don't want to get rid of all your fat. You really desperately need your fat. Um, in fact, it's so important for our bodies. Our stem cells can make fat without eating at all. And that's, you know, that stem cell, uh, you know, designation is reserved for the most important tissues in your body. And fat is one of those tissues. And so, yes, understand your fat, respect it. Also know the tricks that it has to stay on you. So when you need to lose it, this will be harder than you think. But if you understand your fat, you can work with it. Um, you'll fight it on the same level when you need to. It's like a spoiled kid, right? <laughs> Every now and then you got to put it in its place. And that's what you got to do with your fat. I like that. Yeah. So, well, I highly recommend that all the listeners buy your book, The Secret Life of Fat, and read about it for themselves. And there's so many other interesting stories in there about, you know, people who had uh, one guy who had a very strange virus that made him fat. And, you know, a young girl who had a, you know, an imbalance and she was just eating and, you know, until she got that balance, figured out what was wrong with her. Um, and not only that, there's, I just love, you know, for the women who are listening, especially to read this book because, because it was written by a woman and you went through this yourself. And I really admire and respect that, you know, not by just like, some guy trying to tell us how to lose weight. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's part of why I wrote it too. I had a bunch of male, a number of male trainers, and I think they just couldn't understand why I couldn't lose. And it's no wonder because a 20 year old male is not going to be the same as a, a woman who's close to 50 who's had two kids, right? Total different body. And at some point, you have to stop listening to everybody and you have to figure out your fat for yourself. And I'm really hoping this, this helps people do it. And you know, another thing just to keep in mind as we close here is that don't beat yourself up too much. Right? The dieting industry has all these images of people with six-pack abs. They look perfect. You can eat all this great food and not be hungry. It is not true. It and isn't. you don't even need to be that thin to be healthy. You can look a lot more like yourself and put fat in its right deposits. And, and what's important is that you're healthy and you're happy. Don't let anyone else's ideals of what a perfect body looks like affect your image of yourself. And stay with it. Stay strong. You can, you know, you can combat this. You can have the, the look you want to have and the health you want to have. You just have to stay with it and be creative about how you uh, deal with your fat. That's such a positive message. I love yeah. it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about you. I want to ask you the questions I ask all my guests on Sound Mind and Body. The first one is, how do you stay of Sound Mind and Body in your life? I mean, besides keeping your fat under control. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a good one. So I like to meditate sometimes, just get quiet time, let some of my thoughts go and just get a kind of clarion out with the, <laughs> the universe and like clear my mind and just think for a while. So I try to do that for at least half an hour a week or so, which is probably not enough, but that's what I've been in for right now. That's good. That's good. I, I meditate. I'm so into meditation and I'm getting more into it as I, you know, learning more about it. Um, okay. So favorite sound. Boy, I got a couple of them. I think one I would say is waves. I love the sound of waves on the ocean. Um, mm. Just that, that rhythmicity of it, the peacefulness, peacefulness of it, and that the vastness of the ocean is a sound I like. Beautiful. All right. Favorite memory. Boy, let's see about that one. I think one of my favorite memories is the first time I was giving a talk and I had a pretty big audience. It was at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. And it was my first talk I gave. Wow. And uh, I never knew how people reacted to it. Because, you know, when you're writing your book, you're sitting in your office and you're just writing, hoping people are going to like this. But to see, you know, the live faces of when they were laughing, what they thought was funny, what they thought was a real, you know, profound moment. That was a really memorable time for me to see how it was actually impacting people who had read the book or listened to the presentation. So that, that was really moving for me. What a great memory. Yeah. All right. And a favorite place. You know, the woods, almost anywhere. I really uh, like greenery and it's something I don't get much of in California anymore, but I'm an East coaster <laughs> originally. Oh. And I miss forests and that jungly kind of feel that thick greenery. I love walks in the woods. Oh, me too. Forest bathing. <laughs> That's what they right. call it. <laughs> Okay, final question. What's the most woo-woo thing you've ever done? That's a great one. And I think, uh, gosh, probably it was like a, 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 a psychic at a party who read my aura. And I thought oh. that was really interesting and did a kind of psychic read on me. And I think I was really amazed at how accurate it turned out to be. So that was a <laughs> woo-woo moment. <laughs> that really made me question everything of what's out there and then who, who, how could anyone have known all those things? <laughs> oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah. Auras are real. They're real. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, that is so fun to know a little bit more about you. And, and I really want to thank you for taking your time to be with us again today. If any of the listeners want to they can go back to Informed Fitness podcast where we interviewed Dr. Tara. It was about a year ago, I think it came out. Um, go on to informedfitness.com and under podcasts and you'll see that podcast. But this one, I really want to encourage all the women who are listening to read Dr. Tara's book or get it on Audible, which I did because I do a lot of driving, and just learn a little bit more about how you can feel healthier without worrying about your fat so much. Yeah, that'd be great. And, and also, you know, if anyone wants to reach me, um, I'm on Facebook, go to at Sylvia Terra PhD. I will be putting a course together, um, kind of taking people through the book in a little bit more depth. And so there's a website, thesecretlifeoffat.com. Just add your email there. And uh, when, the web, when the course is ready, I'll, I'll notify everybody. I have already signed up for that because I will definitely be taking that course. And when, you, when your course is out, let me know and we'll have you back on and we'll, um, we'll talk about the course. Sounds terrific. Thank you so much. Well, that's it for this episode. And boy, what great information. Do you think of your fat differently now? I sure do. And I highly recommend you buy Dr. Tara's book, The Secret Life of Fat, so that you can understand what is truly going on with your fat and how you can learn to work with it and not against it. Love your fat, people. It loves you, and it's only trying to protect you. So thanks for listening, and please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like our podcast, please give us a review on iTunes. It really helps new listeners find us. Thank you to our producer, Tim Edwards, and the Inbound Podcasting Network. And thank you again to our guest, Dr. Sylvia Terra. Get in touch and join the conversation. We're on Instagram at Sound Mind Body Podcast, or find us on Facebook or the web. Search for Sound Mind Body Podcast. I'm Sheila Melody. Join us next week as we explore, enlighten, and evolve. Hey, it's Tim Edwards, founder of the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of Sound, Mind, and Body. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, you know that Sheila asks all of her guests how they stay of sound, mind, and body. Well, in part, my answer is my once-a-week high-intensity workout at Sheila's strength training studio. 
Inform Fitness in Toluca Lake. That's right. I said once a week. And here's the best part. It's only for about 20 to 30 minutes. However, it's not an easy peasy half an hour. That's for sure. The workout is pretty intense, but it's extremely safe because my trainer Joe is guiding me the entire time. All of the movements are in slow motion and are in perfect form. Hence the name Inform Fitness. The workout's also quite effective. At the time of this recording, I'm 50 years old, and at my age, I should be getting weaker, but I'm not. I'm getting stronger every single week. You'll hear Sheila say several times here in the podcast that strength care is health care. Check it out for yourself. There's a free session waiting for you at informfitness.com. Click the button, try us free, right there on the homepage. Fill out the form and enjoy a slow-motion, high-intensity, full-body workout in just 20 minutes. On the website, you'll also see that this offer applies to all Inform Fitness locations across the country. For a list of those locations, tons of videos, and information regarding the Power of 10 workout, visit informfitness.com.